Helping the environment while also getting lower energy bills can be a win-win situation. But often people find it difficult to know where to start. So what if we could upscale our actions by joining with our neighbours? The growth of community energy networks has taken off in recent years, encouraging groups of neighbours to tackle their carbon emissions together. There's currently over 300 around the country, and the target under the 2019 Climate Action Plan is to have 1,500 set up by 2030. I'm here in Dunlear in County Louth, one of the early groups to join the Sustainable Energy Community Network to see how the community here have come together to make their homes and shared spaces more sustainable. Since 2016, the community group in Dunlear have retrofitted about 230 homes across Louth and Meath. Eugene Conlon is one of the key coordinators of the scheme here in Dunlear. What kind of savings have been made in terms of money and carbon emissions? The homeowner will get anything between 35% and 80% grant towards the cost of the retrofit. So there's a significant savings there for the homeowner. We brought together 17 people last year and we asked them to bring in their fuel bills. There was anything between four and 750 euro per year being saved. So there's a distinct benefit. Now the other benefit is this, we are actually helping to have my home warm, but also we're having an impact on the global challenges around climate change. The kinds of retrofitting that the Dunlear community group carried out included wall and attic insulation, solar panels, and even replacing old oil boilers with heat pumps. Paul Corrigan is one of the homeowners who benefited from the grants to retrofit his home, which included a new heat pump. Hey Paul, hey Claire, nice to meet you. So Paul, tell us about what you've had done. Well, we had the heat pump put in there about a year ago. It's, it was a life saver to us mm. because we're not getting any younger uh, and it's good for the environment and like uh, our grandchildren is coming along. So eventually one of them will have this and there you go. <laughs> You've given them a, an energy efficient an home. An energy efficient <laughs> home, is correct, yeah. The community are currently in the process of applying to the SEAI for a new batch of works. And this involves local stakeholders coming together to discuss their needs. We're operating from the smallest county in the, in the country, and we're operating from a small town. Um, and if you think of the impact we have made, um, you just think how much more of an impact could be made if there were 200 Dunleers, 400 Dunleers, 1,500, you know, the impact, and, and that's the um, potential. It's hard not to feel the positivity in the room when you think about the community coming together and working together to actually achieve something. But one of the things I think that struck me the most is just how effective this actually is, that it's really helpful in terms of saving money, it's easy to do, it saves energy, it's environmentally friendly, and it makes houses more comfortable to actually live in. So it just seems to be ticking an awful lot of boxes for, for one scheme. Uh, so a remarkably positive experience just chatting to people here today. As well as retrofitting homes, the Dunlear Group have also collaborated on work here to the local football pitch to make the lights more energy efficient, saving thousands of euros in electricity bills. And over the course of the scheme, the community group in Dunlear estimate that they have helped to save over 2,000 tonnes of CO2 from being dumped into the atmosphere. But what about the other main contributor to our carbon emissions as consumers? Transport. Transport is by far the largest source of energy-related CO2 emissions in Ireland, responsible for over 40% last year. As a nation, we commute much further daily than the EU average, and we do this in bigger, less efficient cars, which is why our transport emissions are way out of line. For people based in more rural areas, carpooling schemes and use of local bus links are becoming more popular. But for the moment, owning a car for many is often unavoidable. So how can we reduce our use of cars? If you live in or near a city, there are many alternatives to getting around for most people. 
Transport and traffic cause a huge amount of stress and air pollution in urban areas. In Dublin, they also account for 25% of the city's carbon emissions. However, more and more people are ditching the car for public transport, shared car schemes, bike schemes, and increasingly many are choosing new technologies to get around. E-bikes are becoming increasingly popular. Battery-powered motors built into the bikes make it much easier to cover long distances and tackle steep hills. Alan and Aoife are two cyclists who have had their daily commute transformed by using them. And what's the biggest thing that's changed for you now that you're commuting by bike? I think for me, um, I feel like I have more control over my day and the financial savings have been really good too. The health benefits, um, I lost a lot of weight when I started cycling, which I never would have obviously in the car. It's like a, a free gym, I suppose. You're getting an extra hour of exercise in every day just by doing your commute, just by going on your, on your regular business, kind of. Alan uses his e-bike to drop his two boys off at school and creche and often completes a daily commute of 25 kilometres into his office. How expensive is it to get a bike and to, to run it? It probably cost me about the same as it would to tax and insure a car for a year. We've travelled on the e-bike close to 10,000 kilometres now, 9,500 kilometres since we bought it in December 2018. And if we were to put all of those kilometres onto a car, you can think about the cost of fuel, the cost of maintenance, the cost of a few tyres here and there. It all adds up very quick. So I was spending a typically 60 euro a month on the M50 toll and then petrol maybe like 30 euro a week, so 120, so like close to 200 euro a month. Aoife makes a 28 kilometre round trip commute and says her e-bike has cut her commute time in half. So my e-bike costs 1,600 euro. The bike to work scheme covers a thousand of that. So within three months, I've pretty much made back what I would have spent anywhere in the commute. Safety concerns because of the lack of investment in cycling infrastructure remains a barrier for many to get onto two wheels. But our daily commute is not the only source of our transport emissions that's raising concern. For me, the biggest sacrifice involved in reducing my carbon footprint would be to give up flying. During my visit to the Cool Planet Experience, I was surprised that my carbon footprint last year was so much higher than even the Irish average. I fly regularly for work, and due to a family matter in India, I had to make an additional long-haul flight, which resulted in an exceptional year for my environmental footprint. Oh, okay. Mine is 19,000. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. One long haul flight will undo hundreds of other actions in terms of an individual's carbon footprint. The average carbon emissions for a return flight to India is roughly equivalent to driving 16,000 kilometres in a diesel car. Emissions from aviation are due to increase sevenfold over the next three decades. So, is carbon offsetting the damage caused by these flights really a viable option? Efforts to offset flight emissions can often be met with accusations of greenwashing, making ourselves feel better but having little tangible effect. But one man with a record of walking the walk when it comes to sustainability is Neil McCabe. Neil works for the Dublin Fire Brigade by day and is a self-taught environmental expert who was responsible for making Kilbarrick the world's first carbon neutral fire station. He is also one of the founders of Grown, an environmentally friendly clothing company which offsets carbon emissions through planting native Irish trees. Give me this old kit. Oh, they look so small. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and you think what they're going to do. And what's this one? And this is our black thorn. So this is a, a proper Irish oak we're real, putting in. Real deal oak. Great. It's perfect for our planting mm. this, isn't it? I've been really shocked by the amount of carbon that I've produced over the last while. Um, my carbon footprint last year was 19 tonnes. I couldn't believe it. It's a lot of carbon. It's a lot of <laughs> yeah, carbon. Yeah. I suppose the first thing I'd say to you is, we're going to be planting trees for a long time. Yeah. 
<laughs> How many trees do you think? I hope you're think? here for a few hours. Yeah, yeah, days, days. Um, How I many suppose, trees would it take to, to offset um, that amount of carbon? As a quick figure, you'd be looking at probably a thousand trees. Aside from the costs, the problem with offsetting like this is that there simply isn't enough land in Ireland or the planet to offset the type of lifestyle where long haul flights are a common part of our lives. So realistically, we need to stop taking as many flights as we are. It's nice for me to help people by planting trees and maybe ease a bit of that eco guilt mm. that we all carry, everybody carries it now. Yeah. It's hard to tell people mm. to stop flying, but yeah, yeah, we need to take less flights. We need to look at loads of different uh, ways of our life mm. and how can collectively, with help from our government, collectively we all lower our carbon footprint. Mm. So when you put all these things together, there's so many things we can do, but it all starts with being empowered by learning your own lifestyle and what, what way you contribute to the climate crisis. Mm. You know? And plant a few trees and as well. And plant a few trees, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of us would say that we're environmentalists at heart, but it's clear that we all need to use our heads an awful lot more if we are to reduce our own environmental impact. This means properly assessing how we can all make more of an effort and working together to take meaningful action. To really tackle climate change, we need big system change in our economies. But individually and collectively, we can be part of the solutions now.